Hi everybody, this is Lara at pureelliotwave.com. I'm going to be presenting as part of this FX Trader's Edge Elliott Wave forecasting event on the 17th of August. I'm putting a link in the description box for this video. Please click on the link and go on through to this page and register for this event. You'll be giving me a lot of support by doing that. So that's what I get, I get your support, but you get a whole bunch of free stuff. You get an hour's access to my analysis, so I'll be covering Bitcoin and the S&P 500 live with you. And if I have time, I'll also cover NASDAQ. But wait, there's more. If you register for this event, you'll also have an exclusive offer to sign up for a free month of my Pure Elliott Wave Weekly on my website, pureelliotwave.com. That's once a week analysis of Bitcoin and the S&P 500 and gold and US oil for a whole month free. But wait, there's even more. If you register for this event, you're also going to get the opportunity to sign up and get a free copy of my ebook, Pure Elliott Wave. The rules in my book, which took me years to write, the rules are exactly the same as Frost and Preached's classic Elliott Wave principle, but I've written it to try and be as clear and concise as possible. But wait, there's more. You'll also go in a draw to win one free ac lifetime access to my online course, Learn Pure Elliott Wave, which is normally priced at $395. Not only am I a CMT, Chartered Market Technician, no, not only do I have over a decade of experience, I've been analysing markets since 2008, I'm also a trained, professionally qualified New Zealand secondary school teacher. I used to teach high school science, biology and geography. So coming from that angle, I've created some totally unique learning exercises as part of this course. If you're a kinesthetic learner, you'll learn by doing, and I find those learners the hardest to reach, so I've got some truly unique learning exercises to teach you Elliott Wave structures. There's 20 lessons, most of them have quizzes or further reading, and as part of your access to the course, you'll have me supporting you via email to help you with your learning Elliott Wave. So there's a whole bunch of really good reasons for you to click on this link and register with FX Traders Edge. And if you do so, you'll be giving me a lot of support and I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Lara. Oh no, I don't need to do that. I'm going to look at TLT, iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF today on the NASDAQ. I haven't looked at this for a very long time and I don't look at this very regularly so I want to give more weight to classic technical analysis because I have a little bit of a problem with the Elliott Wave count. I did just record this whole video and I had a software malfunction so second go, let's hope it records this time. Okay, monthly chart level then we'll look at weekly and daily classic analysis for TLT. At the monthly chart level, these last three, one, two, three completed monthly candlesticks all form hammer patterns. Coming in the context of a downward trend, we read these three hammer candlestick patterns as bullish reversal patterns. What context is this coming in? The previous upward trend reached very extreme, was above both 45 and above both DX lines. Money flow index is, is, is exhibiting some strong bullish divergence. But RSI is not exhibiting bullish divergence. The downward trend at the monthly chart level, has n ADX has just caught up with the downward trend. It's indicating there is a downward trend, but there's a long way to go before it becomes extreme and volume is pushing price strongly lower. At the monthly chart level, I would expect some reaction after these three hammer candlestick patterns and possibly a sustained low in place, but we need to look at lower time frames to get the fuller picture there. On balance volume is also making very strong new lows, even from back here. Prior to price, there is long term bearish divergence between price and on balance volume. I'd rather use on balance volume with its trend lines though. But I will note that is bearish, been over 80x. ATR showed a really strong increase for the previous upward trend, which ended with a blow off top on the monthly chart. And now ATR is flattening off as TLT is moving through this bear market. Finally, I'll note that this high was March 2020, that was the end of a bear market for the S&P 500. While TLT iShares have been in a bear market since March 2020, the S&P embarked on the next bull run, reach, reaching all-time highs, and has only recently, or more recently, reached, uh, moved into bear market territory. 
while TLT has been in a bear market for many months prior. So it tends to be, as I understand, a leading indicator for the stock market. If it's forming a sustainable low down here, that doesn't mean the S&P 500 has to turn with it. I would actually expect the S&P 500 to turn after TLT. But caveat, I'm not as comfortable with this particular market, TLT, as I am with the S&P 500 gold, Bitcoin, oil, etc. that I've been analysing more regularly for a long time. At the weekly chart level, there's also bullish candlestick reversal patterns. Here's a hammer and here's a bullish engulfing pattern. The hammer has strong push from volume, but we can't tell because it's a downward session, lower high, lower low. Although it's closed green with a bullish long lower wick, we can't really tell if volume is on balance up or down, if down or up volume dominated during that week. It is a bullish candlestick reversal pattern though, and it's followed by another one, a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. What context is that coming in? The downward trend at the weekly chart level has reached extreme, not very extreme, but it is extreme. And RSI reached oversold, money flow index also reached oversold. We've got double divergence between price and money flow index and single divergence between price and RSI. So in that context, we should be strongly suspicious that this low may be a more sustainable low than just, it's not just necessarily a short term interim low. No signal from on balance volume, been over ADX, stochastics neutral, ATR increasing as price declined in that bear market, there was some strength. And TLT, as I said on the monthly chart, and we saw it quite clearly there, clearly there entered the bear market prior to the S&P. The S&P only entered its bear market here, whereas TLT had been in a bear market for months prior. Now the daily chart level, we're going to focus in on this, and we're going to have a really good look at this low. And here it is. So at the monthly chart level, we've got the three hammers. At the weekly chart level, a hammer and a bullish engulfing. And at the daily chart level, a very strong bullish engulfing pattern. We have bullish candlestick patterns at all time frames. At the daily chart level, the bullish engulfing pattern has support from volume. So we can have some confidence in it. Has this upward movement resolved it though? The downward trend reached extreme. RSI reached oversold and exhibited double bullish divergence. Money flow index reached oversold and exhibited divergence. In that context, give weight to a bullish candlestick reversal pattern. Because we have it at the daily and weekly and three at the monthly chart level, I would expect that this upward movement may be more sustainable and may continue for longer. This may not be just a bounce within an ongoing bear market. The bear market could possibly be over down here but again I'm not as comfortable with this market I very rarely analyze it I'm more comfortable with the other markets I analyze more regularly I'm suspicious this could be a sustainable loan for the very short term though there's a little bearish signal here from on balance volume this trend line is close to horizontal it's got four tests and it's not too long held but that's a reasonable reasonable bearish signal with a break below support here I would expect a pullback to follow that, look out for support at 112. ADX is now declining, it's at low levels, it's below 15, and the DX trend lines are whip, uh, sorry, the DX lines are whipsawing. There is no clear trend at the daily chart level. RSI back in neutral territory, as is money flow index, as is stochastics. ATR showing some increase as price rises. There's a little bit of strength. And TLT and the S&P 500 have found a low together down here. But as I understand, TLT is usually a leading indicator. I would expect it's possible that there could be a sustainable low for TLT. Let's have a look at my Elliott wave count. Now I did record me working this wave count out live and then I had a software malfunction so that hasn't been recorded. So this is my conclusion, this is what I came up with. I deleted everything I had on my previous Elliott Wave analysis and I'm going to see a five wave impulse over up to this high in April 2020 at 17970 and it fits as an Elliott Wave five wave impulse, one, two, three, four, five, there's a problem though. In order for the third wave to fit in the middle of it, let's go back and I'll show you the problem. Within intermediate three, we have minor one, two, three, four, five. When we see three, 
from this low to this high, it fits beautifully as a five wave impulse and this wave count meets all Elliott wave rules in that the impulse of intermediate three, minor three has moved beyond the end of one, minor four has not overlapped wave one price territory, but it does overlap wave two price territory. Motive wave tells me that that's a problem, but that isn't actually a problem. The rule is really clear. The rule is the fourth wave may not overlap the first wave price territory. So if you have an expanded flat for the second wave, and the fourth wave overlaps wave B of the expanded flat of the second wave, the rule is absolutely met. Fourth wave has not overlapped first wave price territory, but this is the problem. This is not a good looking expanded flat, but this is the only way I can see an Elliott wave count from the low to the high, up to the high at 179. This is an expanded flat because B has moved beyond the start of A, but let me just quickly grab my calculator and calculate it. B is 3.61 times length of A. Now there is actually no rule stating the limit for a B wave in relation to its wave A in a flat correction. And B waves are commonly from 1 to 1.38 times the length of the A wave. But there's a convention or a guideline with an Elliott wave that says when your B wave is twice the length of your A wave, the probability of the expanded flat is reduced and you should look for another wave count. But I can't see another solution for TLT for all this overlapping. So this is my wave count. In my research and analysis over oh, over 13 years now doing this daily, I have seen very occasionally expanded flats where wave B is this long. It is possible. It doesn't break any Elliott wave rules. It just means that this wave count does not have a good probability. But in the absence of anything else that I can see happening here, that's going to be my Elliott wave count. And then I spent some time trying to focus on, is this bear market for TLT exhibiting a complete Elliott wave structure? And the answer is yes, and it actually has a reasonable look. Cycle wave two, I'm labeling that up to the high, an impulse for cycle one, and here a bear market for cycle two, is subdividing quite neatly as a double zigzag. A, B, C, the first zigzag and the double may be complete here, label primary wave W. A, B, C, this, a zigzag in the opposite direction is labelled X and it's relatively shallow compared to W as X waves and double zigzags should be. And then A, B, C, intermediate A, B, C complete primary Y, a second zigzag in the double which has moved well beyond the end of the first zigzag, achieving its purpose of deepening the correction and giving the double zigzag a really normal counter trend look. Let's really quickly calculate how deep 2 is in relation to 1. This is a 72% correction of cycle wave 1. So this is beyond the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio. This is a very deep bear market. It's well over the halfway mark and it could certainly be over. So that's my conclusion. It could be over for TLT. I would want to see, let's draw a channel around this, and let's see where the bottom line would be. What would we want to see to have confidence in the view that this bear market could be over? Well, this would be the final. I would want to see a breach of this trend line to the upside but for the short term let's get a channel around intermediate Y oh yeah that's actually reasonably conservative I'll pull this down here for the short term I'd want to see a breach of this downward sloping channel that would add some confidence to the viewer lowers in place down here for the mid term a breach of this wider channel which contains or at least the upper edge would, should provide resistance. If we see a close above that at the daily chart level, that would be a breach. I would expect that that could provide quite a lot of confidence in the viewer sustainable lowers down here. From a price perspective, if we see a new high, finally, above 155.12, that would add substantial confidence to the view that the bear market should be over. So depending on your risk appetite, we have one, two, three points to wait for for confidence in this analysis. That's it for me with an uh, update of TLT.
and I hope everyone's having an awesome day. Oh, if you've registered for that um, event on the 17th of August, thank you so much for your support. I've got some pretty cool ideas of what I'm going to cover when I look at Bitcoin and the S&P 500 and the hour presentation. And at the end of that, you'll get a link to go and sign up for a free month of my analysis from me at pureelliotwave.com. Thanks.